morning, Matt Hostetler and Angela Reed. Good morning. Hello from Chicago. Did I say morning because it's not morning anymore, is it? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) It looks kind of dark out where you are. Welcome to you and welcome to all our viewers to the very first episode of Skype Sessions brought to you by my blog, culturewest.org, covering arts and culture in Colorado. How does it feel to be the guinea pigs for this whole project? I'm very honored. It feels fantastic. I love being a guinea pig. (laughs) I've never been thanked for calling someone a pig before. (laughs) That's nice. Angela. You're a graduate of Ponderosa High School yes, in Douglas County, Colorado, and it, it's hard to believe, but it was all the way back in 2009 when we met up with you backstage at the Buell Theater. You were playing all the adult women in Spring Awakening, and Matt, that same year, you were in the 25th anniversary graduating class of the Denver Center's late, great National Theater Conservatory. That's exactly right. And you're also a graduate of Glenwood Springs High School. Yes. So, yes, uh, so on January 8th, you're coming home. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. You both are coming home next week as part of the first national touring production of War Horse, presented here in the United States by the National Theater of Great Britain, before they even get a national tour of their own show. That's so, right. So take that, Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, tell us about your lovely wife. January Lavoy, uh, my beautiful wife, uh, uh, since September of 2011. Um, was a is also a graduate of the National Theater Conservatory, uh, and after graduating, did a season uh, at the Denver Center. People might remember her from Streetcar Named Desire, um, Merchant of Venice. Um, she did several shows. Um, Lobby at, Hero, I remember that one. Lobby Hero, exactly, exactly. She's doing well enough that we're probably never going to see her again, are we? <laughs> that I don't. I never say never. And Angela, how do we know your lovely husband? Uh, my husband, Todd Cerverus, he was on the uh, first year of the Spring Awakening tour with me, and now we are touring together again. He is also in War Horse. And what, is, uh, what are both of your roles in War Horse? We play a married couple, uh, Rose and Ted Naricott. We are the parents of Albert. You are on stage perform- playing husband and wife with your, hus- with your real-life husband. What's that like? Uh, it doesn't always um, click for for couples, I think, to be on stage together. Yeah. Um, I think for us, it's probably because my husband is really patient. Yeah. <laughs> and as I understand, you play a British officer in, yes. in, the, in the story. So in some ways, are you responsible for separating the boy from his horse? Are you, uh, are you the bad guy here? I, you know, it's funny. It depends on who you ask. Okay. A lot, I think I think a lot of people would say I'm I'm one of the bad guys. I <laughs> think so. And Matt, tell us who, who Albert is and what the story is of War Horse. In a nutshell, um, War Horse is the story of uh, a young boy uh, growing up in Devon just before the outbreak of World War One, And he, uh, through a sequence of events, obtains a foal that he raises into adulthood. And uh, that horse at the outbreak of World War One is sold to uh, the British Army. And Albert, devastated and, and with a desire to to find his horse, lies about his age and enlists in the army. By the way, Angela, you may not even know this, but I have a feeling you might. Um, but last week, you won an inaugural True West Award from CultureWest.org for your work last year in the Denver Center Theater Company's production of The Whale. That's so, awesome. Congratulations. I did not know that. Thank you. You, you, did, you had no idea, <laughs> did you? Um, that seemed to be a very special experience for you. Yeah, it's well, it's a beautiful, beautiful play, and I was so proud and happy to be a part of it. I, but I think that Sam Hunter, the playwright, is really kind of on his way, and I'm, I just feel really proud that I was there at the beginning of his what, long career. What do you think a production like that says about where the Denver Center Theater Company is in terms of new play development in America? It, I think it's really impressive. A lot of companies around the, the country do new play readings, and uh, have programs that are similar to the summit, but I don't know that a lot of them actually produce uh, fully realized productions of those new plays. And I think Kent is has done an amazing job there. That would be Kent Thompson, the artistic director who you mentioned, and he's really putting his money where his mouth is. When you return January 8th for War Horse, January 8th through the 20th at the Beale Theater, um, also, at the Denver Center, they will be debuting their two latest world premiere shows, which are 
uh, Grace or the Art of Climbing and Ed Downloaded, which are both examples of readings from last year yeah. that that were that were read at the at the summit and now are getting fully staged productions this year. So yeah, they're really, they're really it's really awesome. Out. And I remember their readings from last year. I'm so let's out. talk a little bit more about War Horse. I know that for most people who know the story, they saw the Spielberg movie. How do you guys describe it to people in terms of the theatrical experience of seeing these horses come to life on a stage? I don't think there's probably anything that's ever been quite like it. I mean, what we hear over and over again, and our experience, having done it now over 200 times, is that um, what you see are horses on stage, and it's kind of mind-blowing. You you see the, the foal grow up into a, a full-grown horse before your eyes, and you see a young man jump and uh, ride on top of Joey and ride him, and... It is not long before you believe that that is a living, breathing, feeling horse. Well, that really is the magic of live theater, isn't it, Matt? I mean, when, if you see the movie, you can appreciate the Spielberg touch and all of the CGI mm -hmm. and those kind of things. But, but, but the magic of live storytelling is that there's nothing that really compares to it, is there? No, it's 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 a really unique experience, and it's and I think it's uniquely suited to the story. The Spielberg movie is fantastic in, it, in in its own right. You know, I mean, there was a reason that Spielberg saw the play and was compelled to make it into a movie. At, at its heart, this is a war story. Yeah. And so I know the theater is recommending that parents use caution bringing anybody under the age of 10. But but I think it's a really beautiful anti-war parable that everybody should see. So what what are your recommendations for parents about who when they're deciding whether or not to bring their kids to the show? I think that there are probably kids under 10 who can handle it perfectly fine. I don't think that we should pretend that these kinds of atrocities aren't going on. Yeah. And I think that parents can talk to their children about those dark yeah. things that are happening yeah. in the world. It, 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 but ultimately, it is a very positive story. Many shows come back again and again. They tour for years and years, and you think, oh, if I miss it this time, I'll wait for it to be coming back next time. This is a difficult show to travel. There's yeah. a, there are a lot of elements to it. Um, I don't see it coming back to Denver or to, to any city more than once, probably for years, if ever. Right. And audiences will know why as soon as they see. Yeah. See, <laughs> so, so, you, so you two Coloradans are coming back on January 8th. I have to ask you, you're, you're doing probably like 14 shows in 12 days, but... What's one quintessential Colorado thing you have to do in the 10, 12 days that you're back in Colorado? Matt? <laughs> uh, I can't wait to, to, uh, to get to my brother's bar, grab a, grab a burger and a drink there. And you're not talking about your brother's bar. Your I'm not talking about my brother's bar. I'm talking about the bar called my brother's bar. Yeah. Um, I will um, aim for a very different experience. I am going to be going to Lake Steve Bath on Colfax. And, um, yeah. Ladies, you want to join me on a ladies' day and see me in all my glory? Come on down. <laughs> we'll bring the cameras. Uh, all right, I'm going to thank you guys um, for, for being our very first guests. I'll enjoy visiting you in the Smithsonian as the first guests of the Skype sessions. I love it. Because you know yeah. that's where this interview is going to end. That's where it's at. Right. Uh, uh, Denver misses well, you terribly. Welcome back, you guys. Thank Thanks. you. All right, Thanks. take care. My favorite part of Skype is that even though I put on a nice shirt, I'm, I'm in my pajama bottoms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. So, We're not wearing bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No pants on at all. <laughs> sweet. Sweet. This is actually the first time I have ever Skyped. Aren't you a newlywed of some kind? It's, I, you know what? I, I think what they're looking at is they're saying, why is she twice as big as Matt? <laughs> That's bad. No, you're twice as, as beautiful, so it's okay. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. That works. Perfect. Don't get me wrong, Matt. You're a handsome Thank man. You. <laughs> <laughs>